Okay, this video goes out for Sammy. I'm going to try to explain where it's at right now and what I'm hoping to accomplish. Okay, and so we're going to start at the bottom and, and I'll show you how I built each layer up and what each layer does, I guess. Okay, so here we go. Anyway, so once I got the aquarium, cleaned it all out, it's 55 gallon, all right, and then I bought um, this kit that contained all the various parts for the basic bottom layer of the terrarium, okay. Um, now the, these little round ball things down here, those are like clay balls and what they do is they, they soak up water and they hold it and they release it and they keep the bottom from becoming waterlogged, okay? Now above that, once I've got that layer laid out, I've got this it, it, it's like a it's like a, uh, a a grass block you know it's like a sunscreen kind of netting kind of thing that I lay as a layer over the top of that okay and above that is my growing medium and that's a special mix you know it's 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 called AGB I believe uh, but you know it's a growing mixture that's that's scientifically formulated to supposedly be the best there is you know but now what happens is that you got this layer here and then you've got that little barrier and so when water comes down through it doesn't draw your growing medium down down into this area here you know and become all like mud or whatever so it keeps the water from water logging this area, which you don't want. You just want it to be moist, not wet, you know. Okay, and so then you get you, you get those you get those layers in, and above that, if you see in like like in areas like this and here, uh, that's sphagnum moss, and what that does is that kind of helps hold the moisture in instead of just releasing into the air you know it keeps it it keeps it a certain amount of humidity in the soil itself it helps you know and then once you get above this level then basically you're starting to deal with landscaping okay um, but this this is actually the most important level to get this right because if you got this wrong, nothing else matters, you know. So you have to get this right. You have to have that barrier between so that the soil don't just leak down into this area. And, and that bottom area is important too to make sure that it don't just pool up as a pool of water. No, it soaks up into these clay balls and they just release over time. Perfect system. So far, I hope anyway okay so we're at that layer now let's get up to the ground level let me get up and we'll see if I can how well my uh, camera abilities are at this point okay All right. so the next level is the ground level now let me see if I can uh, get you an idea of what the ground level is actually like with the terrain okay now of course there's your waterfall and that not only provides drinking water for the frogs it also provides humidity humidity for the overall system okay and and then we come into uh, the Chinese elm and I've used the the original white stones that were in the bottom of the terrarium. Back then it was an aquarium, of course. But the original white stones I washed and I used them as a different landscaping method 
of kind of helping to make the elm stand out you know and um, in the back of the elm up against the wall if you can see it there's an ivy growing and that will eventually cover the wall and and you know of course it all just takes time but and then and then then you of course you've got the driftwood that frames the bonsai you know and it's hard to really get an idea of what it really does with the bonsai without seeing it but that's about as best you can do and getting back down to ground level now now you got the you got the rock terrain and and then it turns into this uh, hilly rock strewn area which is a whole different terrain look and everything else you've got this big rock in the background and behind it it's hard to see but behind it is more moss and such I, I've still got several well maybe a dozen plants that are still going to be introduced to the whole system um, that's an air plant that I um, put on the wall the back wall which is a, which is a rock wall but it's not real rock it's just imitation rock and it looks really realistic okay and there'll be there'll be more stuff there's not going to be ivy growing on this two different types actually there's there's the other variety um, well, it, it, it's kind of hard to see because it, it's so small yet, but it's growing up around the air plant and, and ends up right there. You can see the end of it. Eventually, it'll climb up that crack and develop roots and come out all over. And then, um, let's see, okay. So, we, we, we were at the uh, Rocky Hill. And, and then as we come across, we, we, we come across this leaf-strewn area, which has the juniper tree. And it, it has its own landscaping look, too. As you see, the, the leaves are, are all the way back to the wall, and they come up and around, and, and they kind of help with the uh, overall look of the thing, just to give it a different look. And you want to keep, you want to keep some kind of layer between your dirt layer here and, and the area that the frogs are going to go on. I mean, if you're going to get frogs, if you don't get frogs, it doesn't matter. But with frogs, you know, if you, if you get this dirt layer with no covering on top of it and just have the bare dirt with plants growing out of it, the frogs being all humid and such, they'll get on the dirt and they'll get all covered in dirt and, well, try giving a little frog the size of your thumbnail a bath, you know, I mean, <laughs> anyway, well, okay, so we're at the rock strewn area and, and, and you saw my juniper, he's looking good still, he's showing no signs of stress, I like that, and then, down in the crotch of the um, driftwood, I've got an ivy growing, which eventually will wind its way up the driftwood. And I've got mini orchids growing, which is right, right in the center of the picture. No, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Nope, that's the, that's the end of the ivy. He's still hanging out there. But down in there, trust me, there's some orchids, and there's going to be more orchids growing. I've uh, sowed seeds in this area, and so this should be a little mini orchid area, and it should be quite nice. And then along this stretch of branch, <laughs> one of my favorite features I haven't put in yet, but I will be, it's going to have uh, little mini mushrooms growing along here that are actually glow in the dark. You shut off the lights and they, and they have a luminescence to them. They glow in the dark, and that's going to be so cool along that. And and on up the driftwood, then you've got a 
you've got a couple more air plants and the driftwood goes on up into the corner of the tank. And then this plant here in the back is is my one of my roommate's house or actually outdoor plants. And it kind of resembled the tree to me in a way. And so I got a cutting off it and I've got it added and actually that branch there, it, it, it goes up along the wall and I don't know, I think that's going to add a bit, a bit of green to the whole situation. And then in this corner, I've got a completely different kind of moss, which, which kind of resembles, I don't know, a, a swampland? I don't know, something, you know, but it's completely different than this kind of moss, which resembles more of a soft, hilly, grassy side. This has just more of a textured, you know, it looks like ferns are growing out of it and all kinds of things there. So that's kind of cool. And then, let's see, uh, I've kind of given you the grand tour of the tank so that you know what's going on there. Now, up here, so we'll go back over here into the corner of the tank. Now you see how that's the corner. I follow it on up. And... I've got that device right there, and what that is, that's like a shower head, kind of, and it, uh, it makes it rain in the whole place. There's one there, and then there's one there, and it, it, it's on an automatic system, that's the base system there. It holds like two gallons of water and I can set it for how many times I want it to go off a day and when it does go off, how long I want it to go off for. You know, it's a pretty cool little system. And so that's gonna make it rain. And of course I've had to have, make a whole lot of modifications. Originally, the top here was, was just an acrylic lid top with the hinge and all like that but as I've gone along I've had to drill all these little holes so that it doesn't become too humid in the tank and that's pretty important you have to be able to control the humidity and the temperature exactly in order for the frogs you know to survive and and, and you know hopefully breed and then this, now this here, that little deal sitting on top of the tank, now that's a grow light. It's a $150 grow light, <laughs> it's not cheap. But it's very important to the whole system because I believe personally that this light is why I'm going to be able to grow my bonsais in the terrarium where all the things I found online say oh no forget about it you're not going to be able to do it they won't be able to survive in a terrarium situation but what this light does it's an LED light and it gives the exact color light spectrum that plants need to thrive okay I'll turn it on and now now you see how the system looks now okay you ready watch when I turn it on boom okay now it has kind of a pinkish tinge to it but I can put up with that for the time I leave it on and it just makes all the plants in the thing go nuts and go oh yeah so anyways there you go Sammy it's gonna probably take forever to download this video onto you uh, onto uh, Facebook but um, I hope you like it and it's, uh, I see now it's almost 15 minutes long so I guess I gotta cut it off anyway give it if you have any questions just Shoot me, shoot me the question. Have a good one. Bye.